a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Orlando Nightclub Shooting on 2016, Omar Mateen, a 29-year-old security guard, killed 49 people and wounded 58 others in a terrorist attack slash hate crime inside Pulse, a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida, United States. He was shot and killed by Orlando Police Department officers after a three-hour standoff. Pulse was hosting a Latin night, and thus most of the victims were Latinos. It is the deadliest incident of violence against LGBT people in U.S. history, and the deadliest terrorist attack in the U.S. since the September 11 attacks in 2001. At the time, it was the deadliest mass shooting by a single shooter in the U.S. being surpassed the following year by the Las Vegas shooting. It remains the deadliest U.S. mass shooting in which the perpetrator did not commit suicide. In a 911 call shortly after the shooting began, Mateen swore allegiance to the leader of the Islamic State of Iraq in the Levant, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, and said the shooting was triggered by the U.S. killing of Abu Wahib in Iraq the previous month. He later told a negotiator he was out here right now because of the American-led interventions in Iraq and in Syria, and that the negotiator should tell the United States to stop bombing. Initial reports said Mateen may have been a patron of the nightclub and used gay dating websites and apps, but Federal Bureau of Investigation officials said they did not find any credible evidence to substantiate these claims. The Central Intelligence Agency also conducted an investigation and said it found no evidence of communications between Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant and Mateen. First Shots and Hostage Situation On 2016, Pulse, a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida, was hosting Latin Night, a weekly Saturday night event drawing a primarily Hispanic crowd. About 320 people were inside the club, which was serving last call drinks at around DDT on. After arriving at the club by van, Omar Mateen approached the building on foot, armed with a 6 hour Emsk semi-automatic rifle and a 9mm Glock 17 semi-automatic pistol. At Officer Adam Gruler, a uniformed off-duty Orlando Police Department officer working extra duty as a security guard, engaged Mateen. Mateen bypassed him into the building and began shooting patrons. Dozens were killed or severely injured. Grula called in a signal for assistance. When additional officers arrived at the nightclub, he shouted, the gunman s in the patio, and resumed firing at Mateen. Two officers joined Grula in engaging Mateen, who then retreated farther into the nightclub and began a hostage situation. In the next 45 minutes, about 100 officers from the OPD and the Orange County Sheriff's Office were dispatched to the scene. Among the earliest first responders to arrive were a firefighter crew from and two supporting firefighter paramedics from AT Fire and emergency medical services personnel from the Orlando Fire Department were deployed during the entire incident. During the shooting, some of the people who were trapped inside the club sought help by calling or sending text messages to friends and relatives. Initially, some of them thought the gunshots were firecrackers or part of the music. A recently discharged Marine veteran who was working as a bouncer immediately recognized the sounds as gunfire from a high-caliber gun, jumped over a locked door, behind which dozens of people were hidden and paralyzed by fear, and opened the latched door behind them that allowed about 70 people to escape. Many described a scene of panic and confusion caused by the loud music and darkness. One person shielded herself by hiding inside a bathroom and covering herself with bodies. A bartender said she took cover beneath the glass bar. At least one patron tried to help those who were hit. According to a man trapped inside a bathroom with 15 other patrons, Mateen fired 16 times into the bathroom, through the closed door, killing at least two and wounding several others. According to one of the hostages, Mateen entered a bathroom in the nightclub's northwest side and opened fire on the people hiding there, wounding several. The hostage, who had taken cover inside a stall with others, was injured by two bullets and struck with flying pieces of a wall that was hit by stray bullets. Mateen's rifle then jammed briefly, at which point he switched to using a handgun. Two survivors quoted Mateen as saying, I don't have a problem with black people, and that he wouldn't stop his assault until America stopped bombing his country. Other survivors heard Mateen claim that he had explosives as well as snipers stationed around the club. 
patrons trapped inside called or texted 911 to warn of the possible presence of explosives. Emergency response At several minutes after the gunfire started, the club posted on its Facebook page, Everyone get out of Pulse and keep running. At Mateen placed a 911 call in which he mentioned the Boston Marathon bombers, Tamerlan and Jokar Sarnav, as his homeboys, and made a reference to Mona Muhammad Abu Salha, an American citizen who died in a suicide bombing in Syria in 2014. Mateen said he was inspired by Abu Salah's death for the Al Nusra Front targeting Syrian government troops, and swore allegiance to Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant leader al Baghdadi. The FBI said that Mateen and Abu Salha had attended the same mosque and knew each other casually. Mateen made two other 911 calls during the shooting. Numerous 911 calls were made by the patrons inside the nightclub around this time. After the initial rounds of gunfire between Mateen and the security guard at Pulse, six officers, with at least a couple carrying assault rifles, shot out a large glass window and followed the sound of shooting to the bathroom area. When Mateen stuck his head out from one of the bathrooms, at least two officers shot at him. After the gunfire stopped, they were ordered to hold position instead of storming the bathroom. According to one of the officers, after about 15 to 20 minutes, SWAT arrived and had the officers withdraw as the officers were not really in tactical gear. SWAT then took over the operation. When asked why the officers didn't proceed to the bathroom and engage Mateen, Orlando Police Chief John Mina said it was because Mateen went from an active shooter to a barricaded gunman and had hostages. He also noted, if he had continued shooting, our officers would have went in there. At that time, the last shot by Mateen was fired between and rescues of people trapped inside the nightclub commenced and continued throughout the night because so many people were lying on the dance floor. One rescuing officer was forced to demand, I f you're alive, raise your hand. By police had managed to extract nearly all of the injured from the nightclub. Those who remained included the hostages held by Mateen in the bathroom, as well as a dozen people who were hiding inside dressing rooms. Phone calls and negotiations At, Mateen called News 13 of Orlando and said, I'm the shooter. It's me. I am the shooter. He then said he was carrying out the shooting on behalf of Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant and began speaking rapidly in Arabic. Mateen also said the shooting was triggered by a U.S.-led bombing strike in Iraq that killed Abu Wahib, an Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant military commander. On, a crisis negotiator was present as Mateen was holed up inside and holding hostages. Officers initially believed he was armed with a suspicious device that posed a threat, but it was later revealed to be a battery that fell out of an exit sign or smoke detector. Police hostage negotiators spoke with Mateen by telephone three times between and he claimed during one of the calls that he had bombs strapped to his body. He also claimed that he had a vehicle in the parking lot with enough explosives to take out city blocks. At the OPD announced to the public that there was a shooting at the club and that there were multiple injuries. At eight of the hostages escaped after police had removed an air conditioning unit from an exterior wall. At approximately, Mateen told negotiators that he planned to strap explosive vests to four hostages, strategically place them in different corners of the building, and detonate them in 15 minutes. OPD officers then decided to end negotiations and prepared to blow their way in. At around, Mateen's second wife, after receiving a call from her mother at approximately asking where her husband was, sent a text message to Mateen asking where he was. Mateen texted back asking her if she had seen the news. After she replied, no, Mateen responded, I love you, babe. According to one source, she texted him back at one point saying that she loved him. She also called him several times during the standoff, but he did not answer. She found out about what was happening at after the police told her to come out of her house with her hands up. A survivor of the shooting recalled Mateen saying he wanted the United States to stop bombing his country. The FBI said Mateen told a negotiator to tell America to stop bombing Syria and Iraq and that was why he was out here right now. Rescue and Resolution the FBI reported that no shots were heard between the time Mateen stopped exchanging gunfire with the first responders and 
When Orlando police breached the building's wall, just before the breach, Mateen entered a women's bathroom where the hostages were hiding, and opened fire, killing a man who sacrificed his life to save the woman behind him and at least one other, according to witnesses. At 14 SWAT officers, after failing to blow open a big enough hole in the bathroom's exterior wall using a bomb, successfully breached the building. When a policeman drove a Bearcat armored vehicle through a wall in the northern bathroom, they then used two flashbangs to distract Mateen, and shot at him. The breach drew Mateen out into the hallway, and at, he engaged the officers. He was shot eight times and killed in the resulting shootout, which involved at least 11 officers who fired a total of about 150 bullets. He was reported, down, at at, the police said a bomb squad had set off a controlled explosion. At, the Orlando police posted on Twitter, pulse shooting. The shooter inside the club is dead. Thirty hostages were freed during the police operation. The survivors were searched by police for guns and explosives. Casualties Fifty people died in the incident, including Mateen, and another 58 were injured, some critically. Many underwent surgery. Thirty-nine, including Mateen, were pronounced dead at the scene, and eleven at local hospitals. Of the 38 victims to die at the scene, 20 died on the stage area and dance floor, 9 in the nightclub's northern bathroom, 4 in the southern bathroom, 3 on the stage, 1 at the front lobby, and 1 out on the patio. At least 5 of the dead were not killed during the initial volley of gunfire by Mateen, but during the hostage situation in the bathroom, most of the injured, 44 people, were taken to the Orlando Regional Medical Center, the primary regional trauma center three blocks away. Twelve others went to Florida Hospital Orlando. Nine of ORMC's patients died there, and by 27 remained hospitalized, with six in critical condition. ORMC performed a total of 76 surgeries on its patients. The last of the injured was discharged from ORMC on nearly three months after the shooting. Autopsies of all 49 deceased victims were completed by the Orange County Medical Examiner's Office by, and their results were released in early August. According to the autopsy reports, many of the victims were shot multiple times in the front or side, and from a short distance. More than a third were shot in the head, and most had multiple bullet wounds and were likely shot more than three feet away. In total, there were over 200 gunshot wounds. A responding police officer received a minor eye injury when a bullet hit his helmet. Pulse was hosting Latin night. Over 90% of the victims were of Hispanic background and half of those were of Puerto Rican descent. Four Dominicans and three Mexican citizens were killed. Three Colombians and two Canadians were injured. An off-duty United States Army Reserve captain at the club who was not in uniform was also killed. The attack is the second deadliest mass shooting by a single shooter in United States history, behind the 2017 Las Vegas shooting. Prior to the Las Vegas shooting, the Pulse shooting had been the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. It is also the deadliest incident of violence against lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people in the history of the United States, surpassing the 1973 upstairs lounge arson attack, and the deadliest terrorist attack in the United States since the September 11th attacks in 2001. Perpetrator the gunman was identified as 29-year-old Omar Mateen, an American born in New Hyde Park, New York. His parents were Afghan, and he was raised as a Muslim. At the time of the shooting, he lived in an apartment complex in Fort Pierce, Florida, 117 miles from the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. Mateen's body was buried in the Muslim Cemetery of South Florida, near Hialeah Gardens. Personal Life from October 2006 until April 2007, Mateen trained to be a prison guard for the Florida Department of Corrections. As a probationary employee, he received an administrative termination. Upon a warden's recommendation after Mateen joked about bringing a gun to school, Mateen unsuccessfully pursued a career in law enforcement, failing to become a Florida state trooper in 2011 and to gain admission to a police academy in 2015. According to a police academy classmate, Mateen threatened to shoot his classmates at a cookout in 2007, after his hamburger touched pork, in violation of Islamic dietary laws. 
Other witnesses, however, said that they saw Mateen drink alcohol, and even, get drunk. Since 2007, he had been a security guard for G4S Secure Solutions. The company said two screenings, one conducted upon hiring, and the other in 2013, had raised no red flags. Mateen held an active statewide firearms license and an active security officer license, had passed a psychological test, and had no criminal record. After the shooting, the psychologist who reportedly evaluated and cleared Mateen for his firearms license in 2007 by G4S Records denied ever meeting him or having lived in Florida at the time, and said she had stopped her practice in Florida since January 2006. G4S admitted Mateen's form had a clerical error, and clarified that he had instead been cleared by another psychologist from the same firm that bought the wrongly named doctor's practice. This doctor had not interviewed Mateen, but evaluated the results of a standard test used in the screening he undertook before being hired. G4S was subsequently fined for lapses in its psychological testing program. In 2009, Mateen married his first wife, who left him after a few months. The couple's divorce became final in 2011. Following the nightclub attack, she said Mateen was mentally unstable and mentally ill and obviously disturbed deeply and traumatized, was often physically abusive and had a history of using steroids. His autopsy revealed signs of long-term and habitual steroid use, so more toxicology tests were ordered for confirmation. As of 2016, federal investigators were uncertain whether Mateen's steroid use was a factor in the attack. At the time of the shooting, Mateen was married to his second wife and had a young son. Motive A former co-worker of Mateen's at G4S said Mateen had talked about killing people, used slurs and had a lot of hatred for people, black people, women. He did not like Jews, he did not like Hispanics, nor did he like gay or lesbian people. An unnamed police academy classmate said Mateen asked him out around 2006 that they had spent time at gay bars together after class, and that he believed Mateen was gay. He also described him as socially awkward and disliked by classmates. A man who self-identified as Mateen's lover of two months, Miguel, stated that he believed the massacre was out of revenge against Latino men, while Mateen learned he may have been exposed to HIV from a Puerto Rican man with whom he had sex. Mateen's autopsy results, however, showed that he was HIV negative. At least four regular Pulse customers reported having seen Mateen visit the nightclub on no fewer than a dozen occasions. One of them said he would sometimes become drunkenly, loud and belligerent, and at other times would drink in a corner by himself. According to a witness who recognized him outside the club an hour before the shooting, Mateen had messaged him using Jacked, a gay dating app, intermittently over the course of a year before the attack. Another witness said Mateen used Grinder, a gay hookup app, and Adam for Adam website to communicate with gay men, and had posted pictures of himself on both sites. A third witness said Mateen would try to pick up men at the nightclub. However, according to federal law enforcement officials, the FBI suspects the witness is claiming Mateen's homosexuality could be mistaken and has doubts that Mateen was gay. Law enforcement sources said the FBI found no photographs, text messages, smartphone apps, pornography, or cell tower location data to suggest Mateen lived a gay life, closeted or otherwise. On the day of the shooting, Mateen's father, Mia Sedeke Mateen, said that he had seen his son get angry after seeing a gay couple kiss in front of his family at the Bayside Marketplace in Miami months prior to the shooting, which he suggested might have been a motivating factor. Two days later, after his son's sexual orientation became a subject of speculation, Mateen's father said he did not believe his son was homosexual. Mateen's ex-wife, however, claimed that his father called him gay while in her presence. Speaking on her behalf, her current fiancé said that she, his family, and others believed he was gay, and that, the FBI asked her not to tell this to the American media. In the hours before the shooting, Mateen used several Facebook accounts to write posts vowing vengeance for American airstrikes in Iraq and Syria and to search for content related to terrorism. These posts 
since deleted, were recovered and included in an open letter by Senate Homeland Security Chairman Ron Johnson to Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg seeking further information about Mateen's use of the site. During the shooting, Mateen made a 911 call claiming it was an act of retaliation for the killing of, among others, Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant militant Abu Wahib in an airstrike the previous month. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?